So in this part we're going to um, make the enemies arrive on the screen at certain intervals um, and we'll randomize which side of the screen they add on. They're going to come in groups. So um, we're going to go to the enemy one object and one of the things we're going to do first is we're actually going to, when we create this, um, we're going to change the speed so that whenever we create a new enemy, it'll start moving towards the bottom of the screen. So we need to add a set speed. And we're going to change the speed to vertical, and we're going to change it to a vertical speed of 2, uh, because that's slower than the enemy laser is moving, so uh, we don't want the laser to be moving the same speed as the uh, enemy, that doesn't make much sense, but um, it also gives time for the player to react and try to kill the enemies. So, um, and then we're just gonna we're gonna change this countdown instead of four instead of uh, 150. We're gonna change it to 60, so that's more often now. Um, and that's for remember that's for shooting, so it's gonna shoot more often uh, now because they're moving. It matters that we shoot more often. And we'll go to the alarm zero and do the same thing with the alarm countdown here. We'll change it to 60 so that we're firing every two seconds instead of every five. Um, and that's again because the enemy's moving and um, it probably takes about five seconds for the player or for the uh, enemy to cover the whole screen. So we want them to actually be shooting at the uh, shooting while they're while they're on the um, on the screen and not after they get off the screen. Alright, so now we're going to add groups of enemies. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you what these look like by going to the room. So we're going to place the enemies in groups and they're going to arrive from either side. And so um, it's going to look like they're coming in kind of like this. And I'm going to get a group here first. Uh, let's see, I'm going to put him right there. And I'll put him right here. And really, we want them to arrive from, like, here. Because we want them to come from off screen and then arrive on screen. So, um, so let's see. I think um, we're going to actually scoot them over and closer to the edge. So I think that's where we want them. And then we'll kind of do a corresponding group over here. And I'm doing this so that we have an idea as to how, um, well, it'll give us the numbers that we can actually see for the, um, when we're going to create these groups. So we have our two groups. These are where they're going to start, and then they'll arrive on screen, right? Um, so, um, and in fact, I might even move them back further just to, so that when they when they are created, they're arriving from off screen. So it's kind of like they're flying in at us. Um, and so I'm going to leave them there so that we can use these values when we do um, create the enemies here. And we're going to do that now in the, in the control object. So I'm switching to the control object. Uh, and in the control object, I'm going to in its create event, we're going to add an alarm countdown for alarm zero. And this one, we're going to wait only, uh, let's see, we'll, we'll wait just the 30 steps. We won't adjust it at all. Um, so we wait one second, and then we'll start. That'll, this will trigger the enemies actually appearing. So I'm going to add the alarm event for alarm zero. And here's where we're going to trigger the enemies. And then what we'll do is we'll reset the alarm to a different amount um, so that we randomly or we at, uh, have enemies appear every so often but we want them to appear from one of two spots um, so we'll, you as you probably figured out we're we're going to use a random number um, so I'm going to scroll down and find the random section it might make it quicker if I make more there it is I'm going to grab a randomize like we always do when we randomize um, but instead of using get random number, because a, a random number is going to choose between two values, I really only want to choose from two values. I'm going to go to the to the screen. I'm really only going to choose f 
for this coordinate, this x coordinate, and this x coordinate, because everybody's based on that, right? It's based on these two. So I'm going to choose between these two x coordinates, which is 96 and 544. So I'm going to go back to control. I'm not going to use a random number. I'm going to use a choose. And my two options are going to be 96, and then I'll add an option, and 544. And I'm going to make the target temp x. And of course, it's going to be a temporary variable because we're just using this to create each group of enemies. Um, and this is the kind of the lead enemy. It's the one who's at the head of the, who's a little further ahead of the other two. Um, so, um, you'll notice, oops, in our room, and actually I'm going to bring these down. We'll bring these from right off screen. I think that's better. I'm going to bring them down. Sounds good. Oops, bring you down. All right. So now we're going to bring them, they're going to, they're going to appear just off screen. Um, and then we'll have them up, come on screen. So this one is going to be at 96, 16, and this one is at 554, negative 16. So in either case, because we're choosing between those two numbers for x, um, our y is always going to be negative 16. So when we create the first enemy, we're going to create the head one first. It doesn't really matter. Um, but kind of in thinking about it, I'm going to create the guy in the middle first, which is, so I'm going to create an instance of enemy, object enemy one, where you use the temp x, and for y, negative 16. And we're not clicking any relative. We're just using absolute exact values. So then let's create the enemy on the left first. So in either case, if we go back to the room, in either case, if this this enemy is at 96, this enemy is at 48 for uh, x, which means that's a 48 pixel difference. It's three of our 16 pixel squares. So um, so we'll just subtract 48 from whatever temp x is, because I bet this is, yeah, 496 is 48 less than 544. So to generate the left guy, we're going to change that to enemy 1. This will be temp x minus 48. So it'll be 48 pixels to the left, and then we'll create it at negative 48. And so, and we know that we want symmetry. So, for symmetry's sake, we're going to add a second one, and we'll add object enemy 1. This will be temp x then plus 48, and it'll be the same exact y, negative 48. Okay. Now that we've got that, we can test this. Now, before I test it, though, I'm going to make sure I'm going to get rid of these for now and let the control take over. So I'm going to press and hold shift and select all these and delete them all. So now we're starting with no enemies in the room to begin with, but the enemies should appear in groups on either left or right, three at a time. Uh, and as long as that's working, that'll be the main thing to check. Um, as soon as it loads, there we go. And there we go, we got our first group of enemies, and then we try to shoot the enemies. Um, we don't know which which side the enemy's coming from. Oh, you know what? We only have one group because we forgot to add, well, I forgot to add a an alarm countdown. So I'm going to add a, an alarm countdown for this one. This time, though, instead of 30, we'll wait like four seconds instead. And that way, um, it gives some time to get rid of the enemies that are there. Um, and we, if we find that that's too short, we can always lengthen it. Um, so Let's do that one more time and check that we get uh, groups of enemies showing up at one after another. So let's see. So we've got our first group here, and then yes, our second group. And that I don't know, that seems a little maybe a little short, um, especially if they start appearing from the same side. Um, and so there we go. Finally, changed to the same side, to the other side. So um, at least it works though, and that's the main thing. So now we're going to add score to this. So, so we have 
we want to make it more like a game. We have enemies coming in from off screen. Um, and if we wanted to, we can change the alarm countdown here to maybe a little bit more, maybe more like six seconds between. Um, and that should give time um, for one group of enemies to get off the screen and then the next group to come on. But now we also want to add score to this. So I'm going to go to the create event. We're going to add a global variable for score. Call it player score. We'll leave it at zero to begin with. And we'll use that to keep track of the score. Now, if we're going to keep track of score, we should also write the score on the screen, which means we need a font. So we need to add a font first. And we'll call it FNT game. And I like the Bauhaus 93 font. Um, we're going to change the size, though, to 16 instead of 12. So it's a little bit bigger. Um, and we're going to draw the, the, the score at the bottom of the screen, right underneath where the player is. So in that same kind of area as the, where the, right, we, we put the, put the, excuse me, put the player here with a buffer of 32 pixels um, so that we could um, so that we could have it uh, have space for stuff like that. And so we'll put score right underneath here, which um, we'll actually, I want to move over one here because I want to be at 320 and we'll do, use 464 and, and we can always, uh, I'm going to use 464 as the bottom. Um, we'll go ahead and use the room width to calculate the center. Um, but we're going to display that in the draw event of the control object. So we already have our lives here. I'm going to, just for the sake of, of my um, understanding of it and the, the way I see it, I'm going to actually put all of this stuff above where we draw the lives. It doesn't really matter, um, but for my brain it'll be easier for me to see that and understand. So I'm going to scroll down to our drawing. We are going to first set the font to the new font. We are then going to set the text color. So I'm going to set the draw color to white, but I'm going to turn off the false. Right? I'm going to set it to white because I'm going to have a black background, so um, it will be obviously easier to see. Then we're going to set the alignment and the text alignment for this, I want to go ahead and set to center for horizontal and middle. And that way I, I can give that exact coordinates and it'll be right in right where I want it to be. Um, so when I draw the actual value, which is what I'm going to do next, um, we're going to draw the global dot player score. And I can actually just click on it, I guess. Um, we are going to draw it at room width room underscore width divided by 2. For y, as I said, will be 464. Now, instead of having a caption that says score, I don't want anything. I, I think the player will understand that that number sitting there is going to represent score because we're representing the total or the, the lives with a picture and we're representing the health with a bar. We don't need a caption that says this is the score. So I'm just going to delete the caption. However, I still have to have something in there. You'll notice um, it's easier to just put the the two um, quotes. I suppose you could completely delete the caption. I don't think that matters. Um, so now, now that we've got the score and we can see the score should be displayed now, the last thing we have to do is actually make the score increase. And that's going to come from killing an enemy, right? And so we see the score down there, but right now, because we haven't set anything up, um, we don't see any uh, addition to the score. And so now we're going to go ahead and do that in the enemy step event. So we go to the enemy, go to the step event. We already have the um, the code for destroying the, the enemy when their hits are gone. So we just have to add to this a score, and a set global variable for the score. So we're going to make the player score variable and we're going to add 10 to it. 
So we're going to click the relative box. And now, this is pretty much a game, at least for now. Um, we're going to have to add a bit to it, but for the most part, this is pretty much a game. I'm, I'm getting scores. Uh, players, like there's there's kind of a never-ending wave of, of enemies, which I suppose is good. Um, and we can talk more about how to make the enemies a little bit different. We might want to also raise the amount of hits it takes to destroy the player. That might be a little nice. Um, that's pretty much it for now.